Hello. Crikey, I can't see a thing like this. I'm gonna put light on. Much better. It's Halloween, and so what better thing to do than tell spooky stories and talk about Yorkshire's historic Halloween traditions? Now, most people, when they want to hear spooky stories, they'll go to some overpriced ghost tour and stand in the cold and listen to someone tell them. Or, alternatively, you could sit snuggled up in your blankets and watch me tell them for free. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start off by telling some spooky stories from Yorkshire and then look at some of Yorkshire's historic Halloween traditions. Let's start with witches, because what would Halloween be without witches? Now, Yorkshire had a fair share of them, and in fact, they had something which was almost totally unique to Yorkshire. Well, apart from the one which was found in Lancashire, but they're called witch posts, and they're simply St Andrew's crosses carved onto timber posts in houses in the 16th and 17th centuries. This is because it was believed that witches came into the house through the chimney. I'm not sure why, but people would carve these crosses onto the fireplace or near door frames to protect against witches. Now, in the 16th and 17th centuries, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of witch trials in Yorkshire, both men and women, and the vast majority of them probably had nothing to do with witchcraft. They were tried because of mass hysteria and superstition, but they do provide for some cracking stories. In 1654, Elizabeth Roberts of Beverly was charged with witchcraft after a witness reported that she had transformed into a cat before his eyes, attacked him, transformed back into a human, then escaped up the wall, like that scene in The Exorcist. Later, she apparently transformed into a bee and threw him round the room. Thankfully, she was acquitted at trial, but others weren't so lucky. In 1649, Isabella Billington of Pocklington was sentenced to death for allegedly crucifying her mother and sacrificing a calf. Her husband was also hanged for his alleged involvement. But by far the most famous witch trials in England were the Pendle Witches in Lancashire, and one of them a woman named Janet Preston was from Yorkshire. The year previously, she had been charged with witchcraft for the alleged murder of a child, but had been found not guilty. This year, however, she wasn't so lucky. She had been charged with witchcraft after she visited the corpse of a local landlord, and when she touched him, he started bleeding. She was executed at York in 1612. Now, if you wanted to ward off witches, you've got quite a few options. You could find a hag stone, which is a stone with a naturally occurring hole in the middle, and hang it on your door. Or you could hang up a horseshoe, because for some reason, witches don't like horses. Alternatively, you could get an animal heart, stick it with pins, and throw it into the fire, at which point the witch will scream in agony as though she's the one being burnt. Or, failing that, you could plant a rowan tree, because rowan trees ward off witches and evil spirits. Now for a terrifying creature. If you're a small child, you'd best be careful when you're walking next to a river or a lake, because there's creatures which likes to reach for small children and drag them to their doom. If you feel a cold clamp around your ankles, it's the long, sinewy arms reaching out of the water to grab you and drag you to your death at the bottom of a riverbed. These are called Grindillos, although they go by a lot of different other names, and if the word Grindillo sounds familiar, it's because J.K. Rowling used these creatures in the Harry Potter series. These are the ones found in the lake by Hogwarts. But by far the creature which inspires the most fear and terror and is most widespread in folklore is the Bar Guest, a monstrous black dog with fearsome claws and teeth and burning eyes. There are countless stories about him. One is about Troller's Gill, a gorge in the Dales, where a man foolishly ventured there to confront the beast, but it was found later dead with gruesome marks on his body. Anyone who looks at this creature will die, and he travels around Yorkshire. He lurks for lonely travellers at York, and he prowls the night at Whitby. In the West Riding, he's sometimes called Padfoot, which, by the way, was also used in Harry Potter. And now for something completely different. Albert Pierpoint was by far Britain's most prolific hangman. It's estimated that he hanged between four and six hundred people, including some of Britain's most notorious murderers, war criminals, and even those who'd been sentenced for crimes they did not commit, those who were sent to their deaths innocent. 
He was born in the West Riding and followed in the family tradition by following his uncle, father and brother in becoming a hangman. And the reason I've included him is not just because I have a morbid fascination with true crime, but also Halloween's a perfect time to talk about him. By the way, because of how it's portrayed in media and TV, we often think of the whole process as being slow, of the long, slow walk to the noose. In reality, it took a max of 12 seconds, from the jail cell to the platform. It was a very short, sharp, quick death. It's worth exploring the origins of Halloween because there's this perfidious myth that Halloween in its entirety and as we know it was just a pagan festival rebranded by Christians. On the 1st and 2nd of November, the feast days of all souls and all saints, and these are feast days where you pray for the souls of the departed. And in the Catholic calendar, the day before or the night before a feast day is held as a vigil. So October 31st is the vigil for these two feast days. And this means that for over a thousand years, the traditions associated with All Hallows Tide have been intentionally and explicitly Christian. Whilst undeniably there were pagan influences in the traditions of Halloween, it's so vitally important to remember that this was in medieval Europe a Christian festival. Yes, with pagan roots, but remember that. One practice in Yorkshire was called souling. In it, people went from door to door singing laments and saying prayers for the souls of the dead, and in return, they'd get specially baked cakes with a cross shape on it. In some parts of East Yorkshire, they got an entire loaf. In addition, children would carry lanterns of hollowed out turnips with a candle inside to represent the soul trapped in purgatory. Bonfires would be lit on All Hallows' Eve because it was believed it would scare away evil spirits and sometimes for the whole night church bells would be rung, which does make the whole thing rather spooky. It's Halloween night and all you hear are constant church bells. That is a significant improvement to today's Halloween. Anyway, games involving apples and nuts are very traditional and the simplest reason is that it's autumn. It's so easy to find apples and nuts everywhere. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something new and uh, stay spooky.